Hello, hello. Welcome to the Be A Brilliant Human podcast with me, Joel Young. We're at episode number 87, which means if you go or if you want to see the show notes, you can go to www.beabrillianthuman.com slash 87. Today's a handover episode because I did a Facebook Live earlier today, which I think is a really important topic um, about why resistance in the healing space is everything. Now, it's geared towards therapists, coaches, change workers of all kinds. So normally I really focus on self-development, but there is stuff in here today, I think, which if you take it in terms of not just the healing space between a therapist and a client, but within your own, within yourself and working on your own stuff, then there's plenty of excellent takeaways from today's show. So without further ado, straight after the intro from Kim, wait, Kim, not there yet. Uh, we'll get right into it and uh, and you can join us on the live video. By the way, if you want to see the live video and comment, you can go on to facebook.com slash MPA rocks, find the live video feed. It will be there and it'd be great to hear from you there. All right. Take it away, Kim. Welcome to the Be A Brilliant Human podcast. You're in the right place if you're a growth-seeking being who acknowledges the challenges and delights of your humanity on the path to an ever more conscious life. If you want to feel inspired to love and accept yourself, to feel free to be and express you in all your brilliance, if you want to truly value yourself and others and feel energized and alive both at home and in the world, then sit back and take a breath as you explore and grow the brilliance of your beautiful human self with your host, the father of non-personal awareness and creator of the MPA process, Joel Young. Right, I'm talking about resistance today. That's what I want to talk to you about. Um, I hope I hope you're going to enjoy this. If you're any kind of coach or therapist or change worker or well-being facilitator, there's so many names for that stuff, um, then this is something, this is a topic that I think is, that, that nobody's looking at or they're overlooking it or thinking it's something that it's not. So fundamentally, as per the title, you know, resistance is everything. I truly believe that um, after 25 years of working in this industry, speaking to fellow um, peers who do change work and facilitation, the way I hear people speak about it is, well, it's off. It's wrong. I'm going to say it. <laughs> so what do I mean by that? Well, resistance is everything because, because well, let's have, talk about how we actually think about it. Oh, hey, Charlotte, good to see you. Well, I'm seeing comments now. That's good. Because generally we think of resistance, you know, most people who have a therapeutic practice of some kind will encounter resistant clients. Now, in those sessions, um, generally it's hard work. It takes a lot of energy from the therapist or the, I'm going to use the word therapist, but I mean change workers. For the day. If you do EFT, if you do uh, aromatherapy, if you do massage, if you do osteopathy, you know, any of that kind of thing where you're seeing people one to one, I'm just going to use the term therapist because that's what I'm used to. So, um, chances are you've encountered resistance in clients. Now, we tend to think of that as a phenomenon. It's like it just comes along, and we have lots of stories about why it comes along. Um, and one of them being is that, you know, we, we need a better tool. We think about the tools. If resistance comes up, if I just have the right technique, then, then I can dispense with that resistance. Well, that's 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 not the case. Every time that, that in my history that I've focused on tools when it comes to resistance, I almost it's like I invoke the very resistance that I <laughs> that I'm trying to avoid. So you know it's it's not the tools, and yet we're often you know we're often sold that that's the idea. If if you have the right tool for the right time, then it's gonna it's gonna magically let go of resistance. But resistance is is bigger than that. The other thing we do is we'll we'll tell ourselves that you know um, it's us, and there's there's some truth to that. But the way we do it, the way we we do that, we say it's us. Is we either say you know oh it's a passing phenomenon, which is you know we've got stuff going on, and then there's a mirror in the client. Now I get where that's coming from, 
Um, but in the last, I guess, definitely six to 10 years, I found that's not necessarily the case. You might get a, a mirror of what's going on, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's the cause of resistance. What else do we do with it? Um, well, we say it's their fault. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> They're just a difficult client, you know, we totally put it away there, put it out there. But resistance is something which, you know, if, if you're getting resistance in clients, what that's actually showing you is that's the whole dynamic right there. That's the whole dynamic of what's happening in the healing space between you and um, and your clients. And in fact, I would go as far as to say that it's it's something which is showing up in your entire practice. Because resistance is something which will show up. Yes, it will show up in those clients that come along, but it's also going to show up um, pre-client. You know, you're going to be having that energetic sense of resistance um, before clients come along. And if you think about that, what does that do? Well, if you're trying to run a business as a one-to-one -one practitioner and you have that resistance inside of you, which is going to show up in clients and make things more difficult, have it's going to take more energy from you. It's going to take more energy from your client. Um, it's going to show up pre-practice where it comes up in your marketing. It comes up in how much you charge. It comes up in, um, in, in terms of your sense of sort of that deep, congruent confidence about seeing people it'll come up as fears about you might worry about having someone who comes along and you haven't got the right technique to deal with it whereas you know if if you if you have a way of uh, or if you have a mindset because it's not the skills it really is it's like a mindset and it's actually kind of a skill to come from a space where there is no you in that healing client space where where you're not necessarily thinking about tools you're you've got tools and all tools are great but you're you're free and resistance free then that's going to mirror that is what's going to mirror in your clients and it's it's not again it's not about the tools specifically it's about that sense of having resistance less inside of you now generally what we do with that is is we say well it's about me working on my stuff and there's certain truth to that but generally what we think about is i have to work on my history i have to work on my um you know on how how i haven't dealt with the stuff that's coming up in other people now there is a certain truth to that but but deeper than that it's really about coming to a place of understanding that if you deal with the concept the whole idea if you could take the whole idea of resistance and find a way to um, to transcend it, to bypass it, then yes, it's always good to work on your stuff. Yes, it's always good to, to deal with your history. We know that as, you know, anyone, everybody, well, everybody that I know who works with people one-on-one -on -one in transformation is doing the work on themselves. Um, but if you can handle the, 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 the core, the root of resistance in the healing space, which is where you put you in the way, um, you know, whether you have an agenda about, you know, they've given me money, so I have to get a result. That's going to put you in a way that's going to create resistance. I have to get it right. I have to use the right tool at the right time. I have to be in a certain space. All of those things are, are going to be areas where you build and bring resistance into the fold. So it's not just a phenomenon. <laughs> I mean, it is a phenomenon, but that's not all it is. It's it's bigger than that. It's it's something which is going to affect every aspect of what you do. Um, so I'm seeing some people on here. So welcome. If I haven't welcomed really, who's who's on here? Maggie's here. Good to see you, Maggie Charlotte. And also I've got Jackie here. According to the thing, is four people watching. Someone else. Give me a heart. Give me a like. Let me know. Is this resonating with you? Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm because I because I'm aware I'm like a train right now. <laughs> What's your thoughts? Is this a conversation? You know, I wanted to have this conversation. Um, by the way, one of the things that spurred me on to do this, I've not been on a live video for freaking ages. Um, one of the things that spurred me to do this is because we've got MPM Mastery coming up, which is our practitioners training. And it may seem strange because in a, in a sense, I'm doing an MPA practitioner training that sounds like it's about the tool. And yes, you're going to get a wonderful set of tools, a suite of tools, which are fantastic. An MPA has got resistance free, um, you know, it's in its DNA, really. But the, the mastery really is about you know, people that are going to come along and become certified MPA practitioners. 
what that's really about is becoming completely and utterly resistance free. It's coming into a space where there's there's really zero friction in the space. And that's magnificent in terms of how you energetically approach working one on one with, with people. And also in terms of how, you know, if you think about it, you know, lots of people are really good therapists and they encounter resistance all the time. But what I'm talking about is what makes a difference from going from, you know, kind of a, a standard or average therapist or even a, even a great therapist to a truly, you know, genius therapist. All the real genius therapists that I've studied, if you look at them, what the, the, the key factor is an absence of resistance. There's just no resistance in them. There's no resistance in their clients. And the, the difference shows up. This is why it's, it's everything. It's not just a phenomenon that happens in your practice. It affects everything. If you think about the difference between the kind of feedback you're going to get from clients, I mean, you get good feedback, you, you do a, you, you get some kind of result or a good result, them, and you'll get feedback. Uh, and it will be glowing because they're right it because they know you're going to read it. But what are they saying to their to their friends? <laughs> Your potential referrals. Oh, well, they're going to be saying, yeah, it was really good and I had a good result. And you might want to go into this person. But they might also say it was a grind. It was hard work. It was harder than I thought. Uh, it was, um, you know, they're going to be real about their experience of it. And if, if there's been a lot of resistance in the process, that's going to come across. And even if they're not saying it distinctly, the person they're talking to who might be interested in coming to see you um, is going to pick that up because it's all energetic. Now, compare that to someone who, um, you know, I get a lot of testimonials myself that pretty much say it was so easy. <laughs> you know, it was much more effortless than I thought, you know, and it was, you know, yeah, we and we went further than I thought. We didn't go where I expected necessarily, but the, got the result and so much more. But the thing is, it was effortless. It was easy. It was it was friction free. And when someone imparts that, not just in terms of their words, but energetically to somebody else, that's going to get amazing, amazing referrals. So what am I trying to tell you here? So let's look at my notes here. What else did I want to say about this? I kind of ranted it through. <laughs> I'd love to hear from you, though, you guys who are, who are watching me. What's your experience with resistant clients? What's your approach? Do you have that thing where you think to yourself, um, you know, either the self-blame thing, which is, you know, it's my mirror and I haven't done enough work on it. Do you, do you, what's your experience with resistance in terms of, um, you know, how it impacts you, you know, as a working therapist, when you, when you experience a resistant client, you, you know, and again, I know this is public, <laughs> but let's have an honest conversation. Do you kind of go, oh my God, that was tough. And then you, you think twice or it sort of goes in that sort of, um, uh what's the word the escrow of of um of nervousness or resistance to to doing say more clients that kind of thing let me know i've got lots of highs thanks and thanks anybody who's been given the hearts always good i see some yeah there's some likes and hearts and stuff that's fantastic um really really good yeah so let let me know what your thoughts are on resistance again if, if you're on the replay welcome to the replay uh my little rant um on a very important topic we're talking about um, we're talking about resistance, you know, why is resistance from clients everything? Again, my my thought is that people think of it as a phenomenon. They think of it as something that just shows up and they give various reasons, especially that I need to do, you know, work better or be different with the tools I use. Whereas actually it goes much deeper than that. And it isn't just about the odd client that's resistance. It's a, that's that's really um, showing you the dynamic of how you are in relation to your practice. And that's what makes a difference. It's going to affect your confidence. It's going to affect um, how you relate to your practice as a business. All of, all of these things. So uh, let me see if I've got any comments here. I would have called it expectation rather than resistance. Well, that's a that's a that's a good thing. Expectation, because expectation is one of the things, <laughs> Jackie. Thanks for that comment, Jackie. Um, that's gonna create resistance. Um, expectation of yourself, expectation of the client. Um, I would put that as a as a cause. Uh, Maggie says, I think I have resistance to having clients for all the reasons you said. I'm not sure I want it anymore. I think. I, Thanks for that, Maggie. I, I think that that's one of the things that I get so 
I get so hit up a bit about this. I mean, it's taken me a long time to do to get to a point where you know I, I'm super clear on what the MPA practitioners training is about. And and when it dropped for me, I realized that it was this this passion. I've always I've you know I've been very blessed in my in my career that somehow I sort of stumbled on this or I was naturally resistance free. And then I was able to reverse engineer what the heck I was doing, that I was getting those kind of testimonials or not having a problem with having, uh, you know, many clients in a day, that kind of thing. Um, but, but that thing you just said about, you know, I'm not even sure I want to do it anymore or something to that effect. Um, I think it breaks my heart and I, and I, and I, and I see it as, as having, this is why it's everything. Um, it's it, like it has an impact on on how we as amazing, talented, um, passionate people wanting to, to help others walk through their nightmares. And yet I see so many um, therapists, coaches, change workers who are on the breadline, uh, who are burnt out, who are frustrated. I mean, I've been talking to people through the week, you know, about practitioners and stuff and hearing the story again and again you know it's like i you know i've done all this training and i've um i've invested so much money and 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 yet it's hard to build a practice and it's like and and, and then the clients oh my god they're a nightmare <laughs> all this stuff and it ends up with with people saying what you've just said maggie i'm going to read exactly what you said i think i was having to having clients for all the reasons you said, I'm not sure I want it anymore. Yeah, so that that is what that is my point. It's like it's it, even at the point before clients come along. That's why resistance is everything. Just so, so imagine, imagine if you just couldn't believe in resistance <laughs> in in terms of how you would be approaching your practice, how you would be approaching working with clients. Um, you know that's. It, it, if, well, when I go there in my mind, if I compare it, if I think about a practice that is has got resistance in every facet of it, it I would give up. I, I, you know, I'd be like, "Fuck it," you know, what am I doing? It's like it's I'll, I'm going to go and work in Tesco's. It's, it's easier, you know. Um, whereas when you approach it, when you have the experience of like there's just no resistance to it, it becomes part of the joy it was always meant to be. So thanks for that, Maggie. Charlotte says. I have to say to see more. Sometimes I need to notice difference, uh, notice difference between resistance and discernment in sometimes it's and sometimes it's information about the way to go. But sometimes I need to notice the difference between resistance and discernment as sometimes it's information about the way to go. Okay, so yeah, so I if I if I'm getting you right there, Charlotte, um, there is a distinction between resistance and discernment. I I think um one of the things that I want to point to here is that it's not like there's an expectation that there will never be any barriers or comfort zones or or resistances within the th any kind of therapeutic process or any kind of transformation process. But the difference is when we come at it from I just need a tool to fix it or it's my fault or um, all of those different things that we do, that's when that's when resistance comes into the you know if it's my responsibility to push someone through then i'm going to create resistance that little image i put up if you saw it was like a a man pulling a donkey and the hooves going in that's often what we do you know we 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 end up having sort of people with their hooves in um whereas if your relationship to resistance is completely different, then it, that's not even perceived as resistance. It's kind of a trick, really. <laughs> but but you, but you, it's not just that happens within the transformational process. If you can if you can really master that, and that's part of what we'll be doing in the MPA mastery, is really mastering that that sense of there is no resistance. It's just how do we flow, and and there's lots of ways. Because again, it's not just people who. Um, you are, are innately talented that can get this resistance free is a skill that you can learn. Um, but it's yeah, it's so I think discernment is really, really important there. So that's a good point. Have we got any more comments? Let's have a look. Nothing showing up on the on the phone feed here. Yeah, fantastic. So look, here's the thing. So uh, whether you're watching now live, thanks ever so much for being here live. Um, 
let me know are you enjoying the discussion <laughs> am i coherent see that's my i have doubts people have again that's another point there doubts people often will, will i've heard many times from people oh maybe it's a sense of incompetence or a sense of doubt but you know i'm not someone who doesn't have doubts who doesn't have um you know thoughts around uh competency or all those kind of things but they that's to me that's a completely separate thing to resistance in the one-to-one -one healing space or the one-to-one -one transformational space so i'm okay that i have those things <laughs> because i I'm a, I'm a fan of humanity and i embrace my humanity but it doesn't encroach into the healing space so charlotte's come back again i don't I think I don't elicit digging heels in my clients so much as perhaps in myself, as in I treat myself like you just described and dig my own heels in. Yeah. So again, that's I think that's one of the core things that that we're going to be looking at, Charlotte, in in mastery, is you know it, it doesn't in the non personal from the non personal perspective, you know there isn't necessarily a single source or a unique source there might be a, a source which is the expression which in that case that's you you know you dig your own heels in um but that's always going to create resistance in in that space so it can be a number of different sources if you like that that is of of that resistance but fundamentally it's like as as you work through and begin to really understand that resistance is is beyond just it's a thing that comes up that i either have to um work on my stuff to fix or um or i have to um work with the client in a specific way to fix them or that that kind of approach that tends to just continue to sort of clog up the system so yeah all right so i think how are we doing <laughs> i think we're coming i feel like i'm on a on a like i'm on a train today i tell you so yeah, thanks so much for being here. Um, by the way, if you're watching this on the replay, because um, I think everyone here I, I, I've spoken to about um, MPA Mastery, if you're curious about it, you haven't got long um, because we start on the 6th of June, which is like Sunday. So if you're even slightly curious about Mastery, if you if you if you listen to this and going, yeah, I'm seriously, um, you know, I'm I'm seriously experiencing resistance not only with my clients but in my practice or anything else um if you're curious about mpa mastery just pm me you can just pm me here on facebook or send me an email joel at nonpersonalawareness.com um and we can have a chat between now before basically saturday will be your last day but sometime this week let's have a chat and talk about if coming along to mastery and really becoming a resistance free uh, practitioner is something for you all right so jackie's got to go teach class thanks jackie for being here maggie says i'm not sure i'm clear on resistance inside versus the healing space okay that's a good question maggie so from a non-personal perspective there is a, a an energetic bath in which you sit with a client um whether resistance and, and within it is a field of energy that can have resistance within it which can show up in the client or can show up within you um so what i was referring to there was charlotte was saying like she notices that there's there's a a way that she within herself digs her heels in and therefore creates resistance as her as the source of that but what i'm saying is whether it comes wherever it comes from there is an energetic field and if resistance is in there it's going to show up one way or the other it's going to show up within your practice within your within your clients uh sometimes really strongly sometimes subtly but any resistance in that healing space is going to create more friction more stuckness more likelihood of hooves in uh, it's going to cost you in terms of the energetic price you pay for doing that work and also that will be true for the client as well so i hope that answered your question so yeah thanks so much for being here um i've got to skip off now done the regulation half an hour <laughs> I hope this has touched you in some way. Feel free to comment back to me. Uh, again, if you're interested in having a chat with me, uh, again, MPA Mastery is a course in which that is the goal. Yes, you'll get the MPA tools. Yes, you get the certification. 
But I'll tell you right now, it's going to be a boot camp um, on coming into a space of being resistance free. So if you're interested in that, just drop me a, a private message and let's have a chat about it. I'd love to talk to you about that. All right, fantastic. Again, on the replay, leave a comment. It's great to be here. I hope you had a good weekend, by the way. Good bank holiday weekend here in the UK. Uh, enjoying some sunshine. Uh, that's it from me. Big hugs to you all. Thanks for being here. And I shall see you soon. Bye now.